Hey, what's up guys, it's Virakis here, and today I'm going to be talking to all the NPCs, and but don't worry, I'll cut out all the boring ones, I'll only uh, show you guys the interesting ones and my like thoughts and ideas about it, so let's just hop right into it. Okay, so uh, Midas Town had absolutely nothing interesting in it, most of them just like talk about Battlestar Naya and how Gekko is a great Lumion, or they just talk about their starter Lumion. So let's head on to Route 1. Okay, yeah, uh, <laughs> Route 1 is not very much good either, but you know, hopefully Chessman Town will be a lot better. Okay, this isn't uh, like an NPC, but this building literally has no door. Like, I get it if you just like, you can't go in the building, but it literally has no door. How do people get in here? It's all window. What the heck? Hey, yo, if you, got, if you want some Duskit lore, I heard the forest behind Chessman Town is guarded by a spirit. Rumor has it that Illuminate and its trainer were involved in a tragic accident and both passed away in the woods. The family of the trainer buried its body under a beautiful tree and the boy's Illumian watches over the area. That's such a fascinating story, but the idea of a spirit in these woods has kept me from ever exploring it. Um, yeah, that's basically, they just talk about Duskit and like that pink tree that they have up there. I don't know, pretty basic. Okay, this NPC just told me that apparently people without Lumi watches have to buy their boost tokens from a vending machine like this. What the heck? Okay, this guy tells you that Kabunga coffee isn't actually coffee, right? But it can still give you the energy and side effects, right? It doesn't matter. Um, Kabunga coffee isn't actually coffee. And then you see uh, this guy here. Just wa waiting on my coffee. I like watching the Kabunga in the back dance as it makes the coffee. So the Kabunga is making the coffee. Right? Do the coffee beans come from the Kabunga? Are you drinking whatever this Kabunga is making over there? No, of course not. Kabunga makes, just makes the coffee, I think. Um, it's not tall enough to reach over that counter. I don't know what what's in this Kabunga coffee, but I don't know. Hey, yo, wait. This guy's watching a streamer right now. What the heck? Streamers are canon in Lumion Legacy, talking about his feline. Feline's tail will wither away if it's not taken of, taken care of properly. I mean, interesting. Gotta take care of your favines. And once again, this building has no door. Not even like a fake door. It just, you, you can't get in here. It's just, why? Why <laughs> Why is this building here if, if, if no one can even get into it? That doesn't make much sense. Okay, here's my question though. Um, this guy in the Lumian school, um, he says the teacher has a chart telling you all the type weaknesses and stuff. Um, but w where is that chart? Is it on this wall that I'm looking at right now that we can't actually see? But I, I don't see any other chart, what the heck? Also, this NPC is literally Lando. Okay, we know we get Lumi boosts from uh, the, the red vending machines with like the Lumi boost icon on it. What the heck do these boosts thing, or what the heck do these vending machines give you that what do they give you discs no you get discs in the the uh in in the uh wherever you heal your lumens i forgot what that's called the lumi center i'm an idiot um so what the heck do you buy in these okay that's it for chesma town and i doubt there's anything going to be on route two that's like the tiniest route of all time so yeah let's just head over to route three this npc uh tells you about the refinery in Sylvan City, which is pretty important for Sylvan City. Okay, yeah, Route 3 was pretty boring. There wasn't much about it, mostly Geklos and how they like to steal the crystals, but you know, let's just go into Sylvan City and see what it's like. Okay, once again, it was, we need to start like a counter or something, but this building has no door. How are people supposed to get in here? This lady right here talks about fruit, like um, on the fruit tab here. Um, there's like Thunder Fruit and Power Fruit, I think that's all we have right now. Uh, there's a better NPC who talks about it, but um, yeah. No doors on this building. Okay, so yeah, one thing I bet a lot of you guys didn't even realize, Sylvan City has this whole like refinery. I mean, like I remember my first time playing Lumion I Legacy, I just ran th straight through and went there over to the battle here. I didn't even look and realize there was this massive refinery here. Okay, this guy talks about someone named Exploding Evan. Um, I, I wonder what happened to that guy. Okay, I found Evan. He's still alive, luckily. You need to say, everyone still calls me Exploding Evan. <laughs> Evan is still alive and relatively unharmed, looks like. This lady has so many Cathorns in her house. What the heck? Okay, this NPC talks about apartments. Sorry, we don't have any open apartments at this time. Uh, please check again later. Maybe in future updates, 
maybe after Atlantean City, we'll be able to get an apartment. Because I know there's apartments here and in uh, whatever the, the fire gym city is called. And I think there's one in... Uh, I, I cannot remember any of these names. There's one in uh, Hiowa Village and there's one in Sephirite. So maybe there'll be one in Atlantean and then we'll actually be able to use them. I'm buying mine in Atlantean if you ask me. Alright, Sephirite City, not bad. Um, on to Route 4. I think I just said Sephirite City, it's actually Sylvan City, I'm bad. Okay, yeah, Route 4, um, not very much. I, okay, I know there's a lot of good stuff coming up in, uh, Hiwa Village, so I'm excited for that. Okay, this guy's got something interesting to say. My old history book actually talked about these lanterns. They were built a long time ago to guide the spirits that lurk in the graveyard ahead. Guide them where? The energy stream that runs beneath Roria, of all places. The ancient settlers of Hiwa Village believed that all life sprang up from the energy stream. I don't know. Energy stream. Maybe we'll hear, hear more about that. Okay, there's not actually any NPCs in Igneous Hollow, but uh, I know in the future they are going to reference these uh, ruins down here. Um, and there's also this cool dog statue. I don't know. Pretty cool. Okay, so Ikazune spends most of its time traveling throughout Roria but returns to the pagoda when it senses trouble. The only trouble in the pagoda was Ikizune. What the heck? Okay, yeah, it was the stone and all the monks get corrupted, but Ikizune did not help with that. Okay, we monks are honored protectors of the pagoda and its artifacts. Well, let me show you what the pagoda looks like right now. This place is trashed. These, trashed. They, these, these protectors are really bad. They haven't cleaned up after Ikizune stomped through here. Oh, apparently... Hiwa Village was built on a lake to protect it in times of war. Pretty nice. Okay, here, here we are in the Ikazune Shrine. Let's talk to this guy. An old legend speaks of a Lumion that fused its fallen trainers, or fused with its fallen, fallen. I need to restart this. Hold up, <laughs> I'm an idiot. Let me just restart that. Don't, don't, don't worry. An old legend speaks of a Lumion that fused with its fallen trainer's broken sigh with itself. That, does that sound weird? I don't know, maybe I misread that. Ikizune, the Lumion of which I speak, now carries its master's weapon seated upon its head. You can see it down here. Next to me is the other half of that same weapon. According to the same legend, if Ikizune were to claim the broken piece of the sigh, it would boast even greater strength. We stand guard of the piece now waiting for the Ikizune to return and claim its lost piece of its master's weapon. Well, who do you think I have right here? Also, yeah. Um, let's see what this lady has to say. Piece of legend beside the noble samurai. Is there you go. The weapon was broken during a large battle in which the owner was defeated. Now, how good could have Ikizune been if, if its owner got defeated? Uh, no, it's okay. Uh, no, Ikizune. Um, I have a feeling, you know how Ikizune is kind of trash right now um, in PvP? Maybe if it gets like a soul burst thing, or like a battle bond sort of, sort of deal, uh, you like reunite Ikizune with that final piece, and it like fully evolves and actually gets good. And that that would actually be really fun to use. Oh yeah, guys, if you haven't yet, uh, the uh, trainer inside this room here, uh, he'll give you a boost token if you haven't gotten it already. Okay, here's a little bit of lore. Scientists believe that life in Roria sprang first from Hiwa and spread from there. The theory is based on the age of the trees here. Michael Bung and I tried to take care of the plant life in town to preserve its history. Hey yo, wait a minute! Wait a minute, I never went back here and got this. What the heck, what's even in here? A capture disc! Or five advanced- Holy cow! How have I never gone back here? What the heck? Okay, if you didn't know, you can actually fish in this lake. What the heck? Let me see if I can catch something. Um... Uh oh, I'm bad. Okay, we still got the green ring. Okay, but where is this? What the heck? Where does this- is this like a route I'm not thinking of? This looks familiar. It just looks weird. Like, what the heck? It's got a waterfall. I don't know, did they make a whole different separate encounter area for this? I, I don't know. Okay, here's some lore. Did you know that the cave on Route 5 was once home to an ancient race of humans? Ruins from their civilization can be found inside and it's theorized that there is still much to be discovered. Yeah, once we unlock the geysers. Um, what about this lady? 
it is said that long ago Ikazunia and Revenine were the same type of Lumion. Oh, cool! Speaking of Revenine, there's a Revenine statue. Uh, this guy just talks about how Revenine like loyal and dependable, but hard to train. I don't know. Pretty cool. Yo, wait a minute. On today's episode, they were showing us how caring for bonsai trees and Kabunga are a lot alike. What the heck? This lady's talking about how the, the monks are training to take care of the pagoda. Why don't they clean it up after Ikazune wrecked it? Okay, now we're done with freaking Lore City, Haiwa Village. What the heck? Um, now we're on to Route 6. Um, yeah, the only interesting thing that's in Route 6 is uh, that there's a Rally Ranch. Let's just go do that. Uh, all these trainers just talk about how, oh, I went to the rally and I rallied these Lumians. Maybe I should start rallying. And uh, no Gleam Bavors. That's unfortunate. Um, what do these guys have to say? Okay, yeah, the only interesting thing that happens here in Rally Ranch is that someone killed Servolan. Okay, here we are, Route 7. I think, like, Route 7 and Sephirite have a lot of interesting stuff. Um, Highwood Village has a bunch of inter interesting stuff as well, but, I mean, Sephirite, I think, is... Uh, actually, no. High was probably better than Sephirite, but there's a bunch of cool stuff here, too. Yo, this guy's got a sad story. Look at this. Oh, another Lumion trainer? I don't understand you, kids. What keeps you going after each loss? Take it from me. If you give up now, you'll save yourself. You'll you'll save yourself from a lot of frustration in the long run. Well, you see, over here in his like container, uh, he's got the first badge, um, but uh, he doesn't have the second one or the third one. So maybe he failed the second one, and that's why he's just living here, just alone, away from everyone else. Okay, you know what was weird? Um, I like walked past here the other day. And I clicked this guy, and apparently we had to fight. Um, yeah. Try clicking this guy and see if you've fought him before. That was weird. Wow. Even people with the bionic enhancements, the cybernetic enhancements, are, uh, like, getting outcast to this, like, junkyard. Okay. This guy used to work for Polacorp. He was a well-respected scientist. He discovered a cleaner way to produce technology they were making at the time. The only problem it would cost the company a little more money power and maintain but I mean it's a money it, it's a company it's got it's got to do what it's doing there's no regulations in Aurora apparently so here it is um, they didn't like that one bit they fired me and told me that I would never find work in Sephirite again now thanks to them we have we have heaps of trash everywhere okay my question is like look at some of this trash are they using freaking cups or whatever the heck that is to make Lumians no not all like plastic bags that can't all be from just uh, the Pollock Corp, right? There's, this is the people's fault too, I feel. Okay, for those of you guys who didn't play uh, Pokemon Brick Bronze, at the very end, uh, a box like knocks Jake into the portal that sends him to Lumion Legacy, and that's why he's an NPC here. Let's talk to this guy. Hands off, I saw this crate first. I was just standing here and this crate fell out of a hole in the sky. It nearly hit me. When I opened it, I found all these nice orange shirts. Just in time too. My last shirt was in rags. Well, okay, yeah, he's got a Team Eclipse shirt. Um, was this where Jake fell, or did Jake fall somewhere else? That's the question, because... Or was this even, like, the box... Was this the box that knocked Jake in? It could be. Oh, wow, this guy's, like, got a bunch of, like, flyers of Battlestar Naya. Like, I, I don't know what that it says. Evlanites or something? I don't know what that is, but... I don't know, looks pretty cool, I guess. Also, the conditions in Sephirite City are so bad for people who, like, aren't getting cybernetic enhancements. This guy just made a back scratcher. That's not cyberhead, cybernetic enhancement. Um, that they're literally living in shipping containers. What the heck? Okay, that was interesting. Now I feel bad for the people living in Sephirite Junkyard. Um, yeah, interesting. Oh gosh, we're going into Vantacorp Vault. Um, this doesn't have any NPCs in it, but there's some good lore in here. Also, this, this, like, intro is, like, the best thing here. It's amazing. Wait for it. Oh, I just really like that. If I had a better graphics quality, I think it might be darker in here, but I have it on, like, graphics one for some reason. Okay, part of the problem here, look at this. He wasn't stealing. My friends and I were only trying to clean up the trash on this bridge, but then this person says, Theft is not tolerated in this city. Smart scanner detected a 95% chance that he was attempting a crime. This young man's punishment will be decided in our courts. So the police are arresting people for trying to pick up trash? Uh-oh. Okay. 
This is interesting, Pullet Corp was under a lot of pressure to clean up the mess they've made. They recently started making a Lumion to help eat the trash they produced, which is Chomp Actor Munch Wheel, you know. The only problem is that the new Lumions they created produce lots of smog. So then Pol Polut Corp created a Lumion to clean up the smog. That is Toxic Filter Stratosaur. I have a feeling that cycle won't stop there, though. That's pretty interesting. <laughs> I like this. They always get off the good trash. I'm sick of this city. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Hey, I like this guy's cybernetic enhancements. Look at that hat. Looking clean. Okay, this is interesting. If you're here to relay a search quest for a stolen item, we will have to put you on a list. We've been seeing steady climb and theft around the city. People are taking advantage of the new cyber enhancements to commit crimes. Maybe, like, in the future, you'll be, like, you know how there's Team Eclipse is, like, the main villains of the story? Maybe, like, there'll be a group of cybers that you'll have to beat, beat over and over in order to, uh, like, continue the story. Okay, this says... Dr. Halloween skipped Twilight testing is going straight into human trials. Apparently, Twilight is what people use to test technology on. Pretty cool. Okay, I thought this was kind of funny. The cybers in this town think they are so much better than everyone else. At least I don't have to plug my arms into a wall to charge them at night. <laughs> I mean, yeah, maybe you don't want to be a, a, a cyber. Okay, this kid's a little jerk, but... um. He's got a little stuffed animal. I just, I, this looks so familiar to me, and then I realized this is a scapegoat. Like, the ability scapegoat. That's what that is. What the heck? Why does he have a scapegoat? That doesn't make much sense. Hey, wait a minute. Okay, this guy. I saw the kid that escaped the lab. That's Jake. He had black hair and a seer knight. His ambit has already evolved into seer knight. We gotta prepare for that for our, our next uh, rival battle against him. Okay, this is a little easter egg here. Okay, security clearance B, activity level 5, research scientist, height 6.5 studs, weight chonky. <laughs> Why are you reading this play the game? Thumbprint, there's his thumbprint. I don't know, I thought that was really funny. Little easter egg. Okay, yeah, all the, ba all the badges on these guys have the same name, have the same thing, but I kind of want to check, are any of them different? I'll, I'll check, don't worry. Okay, they're researching soul crystals here. They've got a yellow, a green, a red, and a blue one. Maybe, like, different lumines, like, maybe a, um, let's say, like, a fire type would need a red soul crystal to soul, soul burst. Makes sense to me. Wait a minute. This lady talked about, oh, there goes my repellent. Um, <laughs> this lady talked about, um, how they didn't get around to testing the, uh, the, uh, the, like, the, the stone there that emitted dark energy, that corrupted Protagon, they didn't get to test that on humans. And you remember back on, like, the Pagoda, they, the monks there were all corrupted. So if Polak Corp are able to corrupt people, that could be very interesting. And that guy over there talks about how, um, Dr. Vanta's going to be continuing research on these, like, on these stones. So there's some conflicting interest between us and Dr. Vanta, so they could be a major like antagonist in the story and can we stop to appreciate how awesome these trucks are what the heck this is so good i hope we get to see more of this in the future uh, i want to climb on it oh please please let me go in please let me go oh, imagine if you could get in this wait you can get all the way on top of one of these trucks let's go please i want to go in the truck okay there better be uh, a way to get in here in a future update. I would love that. All right, that's it for Sephirite. Um, yeah, Jake, he has a, a Seer Knight. That's cool. You gotta bring your Borox to one-shot that Seer Knight once we fight it. Maybe it'll be secret ability, terrifying. I have a feeling Jake's gonna be a lot more formidable of an opponent in this game rather than Pokemon Brick Bronze. This guy says that you can catch some nice Lumions out there. Never actually seen anyone visit, so I'm sure the island is full of life. Ooh, that could be exciting. They got those big old palm trees. Maybe you'll have to use like headbutt or something like it was in uh, Pokemon Brick Bronze to like knock Lumions out of the trees. That'd be cool. Oh, also, do you see this massive pipe that's blowing out a bunch of junk into the ocean? Isn't the next gym underwater? Uh, that doesn't bode well. Okay, this guy. You've probably seen this guy before. Ugh, oh, where am I? How do I even get here? One minute I was walking the streets of Sephirite City. Next thing I know, I'm all the way out here. Could it have been? No. Okay, yeah, if you don't know, this guy is the one who brought Starla over to Mabel. Um, yeah. Um, that, this pretty much solidifies that Starla is at least part mind type. 
It might have a dual typing, but I have a feeling it's just going to be pure mind. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's it. Oh yeah, I won't cover the UMV. Um, like, they just talk about cephalops a lot and tease it and how they, like, made all those trenches. It's not, like, that interesting to me. It's just cool, I guess. Okay, everyone knows the disc crafter, right? He powers his fabricator with a blue soul crystal. That's pretty cool. Okay, this is the lady. Can you believe what happened to Anthean City? I, I lived there when I was a kid. I can't, I can't even persuade my husband to go and visit it. Not even after all they've done with it since. Is Atlantean City not as nice as Anthean City was? Also, how old is this girl? If she lived in Anthean City when she was a kid, how long has Atlantean City been down there? Who knows? Okay, yeah, that cave is way too ominous to not have a legendary Pokemon once uh, Surf comes out. Also, why did I start catching a Lumion? Watch, we're gonna get a Gamma Swimp here. Nope, it's just a copy. Anyways, guys, that's it for the, uh, I, like, I've, I've talked to all the NPCs. Um, that was a freaking lot of NPCs and a lot of information in this game. A lot of them didn't really say anything interesting, but Highway Village and Sephirite City, they had a lot of cool stuff in it. Um, yeah, um, I'm very excited for Atlantean City. If you do want a part two to this when, like, Atlantean comes out and, like, the beach and, you know, whatever, all in there, if you want more of this, um, then comment down below if you actually made it this far into the video. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I guess I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.